Sutra. Thereupon Xuan Chao went with the Xuan Chu to call upon the master. On arriving, he circumambulated the master three times, shook his staff, his staff and stood in front of him. The master said, Inasmuch as a Sramanabra has perfected the three thousand awesome departments and the eighty thousand fine practices, where does this virtuous one come from? And what makes him so arrogant? Xuan Chao said, The affair of birth and death is great, and impermanence comes quickly. The master said, Why not embody non production and understand that which is not quick? He replied, The body itself is not produced, and fundamentally there is no quickness. The master said, So it is, so it is. Commentary When the two arrived at Tao Tzu, Xuan Chao marched around the sixth patriarch three times, powdered his tin staff into the ground, and stood there as if angry. The sixth patriarch politely asked, How did you get here and why are you so obnoxious? One who has left home has perfected the three thousand awesome departments and the eighty thousand fine practices, and yet you didn't even bow to me. There are two hundred and fifty departments for each of the four body postures standing, sitting, walking, and lying down. These thousand compartments multiplied by the past, present, and future make three thousand. There are actually 84,000 fine practices. Also, the text here gives the number as 80,000. Xuan Chao said, I act this way because birth and death is a serious problem, and one never knows when the ghost of impermanence will pay his inevitable call. It all happens very fast, you know. What Xuan Chao actually meant is, I am trying to end birth and death, and I have no time for good manners. Besides, I put that sort of thing down. Then why don't you think of a way to embody and comprehend that which is not produced, and to understand what is not quick, said the Master. You should be clear about the principles of non-production and quickness. The body itself is not produced, said Xuan Chao. And fundamentally, the understanding is without quickness. That is, if I clearly understand birth and death, then there is no birth and death. And if I maintain that clear understanding, then in fact, there is no quickness. When, why then should I fear the ghost of impermanence? Seeing that he understood the Sith Patriarch certified him, saying, Right, good work. It's just as you say. Sutra Xuan Chao then made obeisance with perfect awesome department. A short while later, he announced that he was leaving, and the master said, Aren't you leaving too quickly? He replied, Fundamentally, I don't move. How can I be quick? The master said, Who knows you don't move? He replied, Kind sir, you yourself make this discrimination. The master said, you have truly got the idea of non-production. But does non-production possess an idea? Asked Xuan Chao. If it is without ideas, then who discriminates it? Said the master. What discriminates is not an idea either. He replied. The master exclaimed, good indeed, stay for a night. During his time, he was called the one enlightened overnight. And later, he wrote the Song of Certifying to the Way, which circulated widely in the world. His posthumous title is Great Master Wu Xiang, and during his lifetime, he was called Chen Chao. Commentary The Master and Xuan Chao carried on some repartee. Your eloquence indicates that you have truly understood the idea of non production, said the Master. How can non-production have an idea? Xuan Chao replied, Without ideas, who could discriminate it? Said the master. Xuan Chao said, Although there is discrimination, 
It is not done on the basis of the mind's ideas. It is not the intellect engaging in intellection which discriminates. Rather, it is the Buddha's wonderful observing wisdom which has no need to resort to the process of reasoning and which yet knows everything. Therefore, what discriminates is not an idea either. You're absolutely right, said the master. Xuan Chao stayed one night at Nan Hua Temple and became enlightened. So everyone called him the one enlightened overnight. Later on, he wrote the song of certifying to the way, which I am sure you all know. It begins. Have you not seen the man of the way who has cut off learning and in leisure does nothing, who does not reject false thinking or seek reality? For him, the real nature of ignorance is the Buddha nature, and the empty body of illusion is the Dharma body. After he died, the emperor gave him the title Wu Xiang, which means without marks, and his contemporaries called him Chen Chao, True Enlightenment. Dear Master Chu Huang, so try, Diana cultivator Chu Huang had formerly studied under the fifth patriarch and said of himself that he had attained to the right reception. He lived in a hut, constantly sitting for 20 years. In his travels, the master's disciple Xuan Chu reached Hua Shua, where he heard of Chu Huang's reputation. He paid a visit to his heart and asked him, what are you doing here? Answering concentration, replied Chu Huang. Xuan Chu said, you say you are entering concentration. Do you enter with thought or without thought? If you enter without thought, then all incentment, incentant things such as grass, trees, tiles, and stones should likewise attain concentration. If you enter with thought, then all sentient things which have consciousness should also attain concentration. Zhu Huang said, When I probably enter concentration, I do not notice whether I have thought or not. Xuan Chi said, Not to notice whether or not you have thought is eternal concentration. How can you enter it or come out of it? If you come out of it or enter it, it is not a great concentration. Zhu Huang was speechless. After a while, a long while, he finally asked, Who is your teacher? Xuan Chi said, My master is the sixth patriarch of Tao Tzu. Zhu Huang said, What does your master take to be Diana concentration? Commentary Zhu Huang practiced in Diana meditation. His first teacher was the fifth patriarch, Hong Chen. Formerly, when cultivators left the whole life, they would travel everywhere in search of a bright-eyed, knowing one. Xuan Chu did public relations work for the sixth patriarch. He traveled all over China, saying, My teacher is the sixth patriarch, the genuine recipient, recipient of the robe and bow. When he heard about Chu Huang's cultivation, he went to visit him and said, Hey, what are you doing here? Chu Huang said, just that, I'm entering concentration. You say you are entering concentration, said Xuan Chu. Tell me, do you do it with the thought in mind that you want to enter concentration, or don't you have such a thought? If you do not enter it with such a thought in mind, then all inanimate objects could also enter concentration because they don't have thought either. But if you do, then all living conscious creatures could enter as well. Chu Huang said, When I enter concentration, I don't notice whether I have thought or not. At that time, I'm empty. Xuan Chu said, If you don't notice whether or not you have thought, then that is permanent concentration. How can you come out of it or enter it? How do you go in? How do you come out? If you can enter or leave it, it's not the great concentration of the Buddha. Zhu Huang was 
dumbfounded. What am I going to do? He thought. I do go into concentration and come out of it. He couldn't open his mouth for a long time. He knew that his own words had no principle, that Shantra's wisdom was higher than his own, and that he had no means to debate with him. Finally, he asked, "Who is the teacher? Your eloquence is superb. Surely your master is even more clever than you. Who transmitted the drama to you?" My teacher is the sixth patriarch, the abbot of Nanhua Temple in Tao Tzu," said Xuan Xuan Zhe. "What does it take to be Diana Concentration?" Zhu Huang asked. Sutra, Xuan Zhe said, "My teacher speaks of the wonderful, clear, perfect stillness, the suchness of the substance and function, the fundamental emptiness of the five skandhas." And the non-existence of the six organs, there is neither emerging nor entering, neither concentration nor confusion. The nature of dhyana is non-dwelling, and is beyond the act of dwelling in dhyana stillness. The nature of dhyana is unproduced, and beyond the production of the thought of dhyana, the mind is like empty space, and is without the measure of empty space. Commentary: the sixth, the sixth patriarch says that the original nature is wonderful, clear, perfectly still, and unmoving. Its substance and function both are thus, thus unmoving, clear, clear, and illuminating. The five shadows, i.e., the five scandic heaps of form, feeling, perception, impulses, and consciousness, are fundamentally void. And the six sense objects of form, sound, smell, taste, tangible objects, and objects of the mind are also non-existent. When you understand the wonderful function of the original substance, there is no question of either dwelling or not dwelling in dhyana. The dhyana nature transcends that kind of dead dhyana which is attached to stillness. The nature of dhyana itself. Is unproduced and transcends such thoughts as, "Here I sit in dhyana meditation." Sutra. Hearing this explanation, Chu Huang went directly to visit the master. The master asked him, "Kind sir, where are you from?" Chu Huang related the above incident in detail. The master then said, "It is truly just as he said." Simply let your mind be like empty space without being attached to the idea of emptiness, and the correct function of the self nature will no longer be obstructed. Have no thought, whether in motion or stillness. Forget any feeling of being common or holy. Put an end to both subject and object. The nature and mark will be thus, thus, and at no time will you be out of the state of concentration. Commentary: What Xuan Chu told you was correct," said the master. "Just make your mind like empty space, but do not hold on to the idea of empty space. You will then function in an in an unhindered way. When something presents itself, you will respond, and when it passes, you will be still. This is this is to be unobstructed." Whether moving or still, whether walking, standing, sitting, or lying down, have no thought. Do not think I'm a sage, and do not think I'm just a common person. Forget about feeling holy or common. Get rid of emotional feelings altogether. Be without subject or object. Do not have something which sees and something which is seen, something which makes empty and something which is made empty. You should know that when you see brightness, your seeing is not bright. When you see darkness, your seeing is not dark. When you see emptiness, your seeing is not empty. When you see form, your seeing has no form. When you see existence, your seeing is not existent. And when you see non-existence, your seeing is not non-existent. The Sura Gama Sutra says, when your seeing sees the seeing nature. That thing is no longer seeing. Your seeing nature is beyond your seeing, and your seeing cannot reach it. Your seeing, your seeing nature should be separated from 
and unattached to your phones, discriminating thing, and you should not hold on the thought of thing. If you adhere to the idea of subject and object, maintaining that there is someone who sees as well as an emptiness which is seen, you are left with just that knowledge and vision. You should put an end to both subject and object. Sutra. Just then, Chu Huang attained the great enlightenment that he had gained in twenty years vanished. What he had gained in twenty years vanished from his mind without a trace. That night, the pupil of Ho Pei heard a voice in space announcing, "Today, dear Master Chu Huang has attained the way." Later, he made obeisance and left, returning to Ho Pei. To teach and convert the four assemblies there. Commentary: All of a sudden, Chu Huang had a great, not a small, enlightenment, and the skill he had acquired in twenty years of diligent cultivation completely left him. There was not a trace, not an echo. Before he had entered Samadhi, thinking, "I am entering Samadhi," but now he had nothing at all. Everything was empty. He had returned to the root and source of all dharmas. Although Chu Huang himself was in Huashuo, that night in his native village on the outskirts of Peking, his neighbors, disciples, and dharma protectors all heard a voice in space saying, "You should all know that today, dear Master Chu Huang reached reached enlightenment." Later, Chu Huang bowed to the Sif Patriarch, took leave, and returned to Ho Pei to teach the big shoes, big shoes, lay men and lay women there. Ho Pei is about fifteen hundred miles from Huashuo. That's a long walk.